Thank you very much for joining. I'm here with Andrew Rossi, the director and producer of Ivory Tower, a documentary that, that confronts one of the growing, looming crises in the country, which is the cost of higher education. It's another crisis of an American institution which is at a point of disruption that could possibly benefit from technology. Mm. And so we explore that pretty significantly in the film. Um, but it's also uh, something that's dear to my heart. I um, really enjoyed my experiences in high school and in college. I've always felt that school um, as an idea and even a brick and mortar place um, can be very nurturing, very um, rewarding, ex provide a rewarding experience. So when I sort of heard that Peter Thiel was offering people $100,000 to drop out of school mm -hmm. um, with the Thiel Fellowship, mm -hmm. when I heard that student loan debt had exceeded a trillion dollars, and when I heard about massive open online courses, MOOCs, um, as a possible way to increase access and lower cost, it seemed like the perfect um, time to go on the ground to a variety of schools mm -hmm. and see what are students experiencing, what, what does college do well, what does it not do well, mm -hmm. and sort of structure an analysis and investigation into the state of college education mm -hmm. around some, some figures, some characters who can sort of provide the emotional context mm -hmm. for, for why we should care. Why? Well, here's a question. Why should we care? I mean, aside from my <laughs> my right. premise, I mean, what right. is your premise of the purpose of a college education? And do we even need to think about the definition of college education, considering you know what population we're even talking about? Well, like your personal your experience in college is a, a top you know top tier school. Mm -hmm. It's not everyone's experience. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, but as you said, as you started off with, college is the pathway to social mobility into the middle, into the middle class, mm -hmm. and that is the sort of key promise that college has offered, and it still sort of statistically does deliver on that promise mm -hmm. to the extent that the wage premium you would have if you go to college versus not going to college and only going to high school is about a million dollars over the course of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other statistics even about um, quality of life and, and life expectancy that show that people who go to college are better off. But unfortunately, student loan debt has totally changed this calculus. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to college and you emerge with more than fifty or $100,000 in debt, you actually are cementing your position um, on, on a lower economic strata because the people who don't have to pay these debts are making choices about their career and about family formation um, and they're not saddled with this burden. So what we really wanted to do was understand why is this taking place mm -hmm. um, and why have tuition rates skyrocketed since 1978 over a thousand percent mm -hmm. and we came up with several different factors yeah. and th those are sort of what unfold in the film. So to begin with state funding to the public schools has gone down significantly in the last 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, schools are in a race to build out and expand in order to attract students and to show that they are more prestigious than other schools. Mm -hmm. um, and that works for certain places that have a really large endowment to sustain that kind of expansion. Sure. But when it doesn't work, that $60,000 sticker price is getting passed on um, to students and they're using debt to finance it. Mm -hmm. So, but the sticker price is an interesting thing because not everybody pays that. Mm -hmm. So in 60 of the 4,400 uh, colleges and universities, um, there is full financial aid provided, full need financial aid, mm -hmm. which means that, for example, the student that we track at Harvard, David Boone, he was homeless, he came to Harvard, pays nothing. free ride, yeah. right. So. If you're not in one of those 60 schools, likely you're going to have, perhaps if you're lucky, a combination of grants and loans. Mm -hmm. And those people who are taking out, again, loans of over $50,000 are just, they're in a bad place when they graduate. Mm -hmm. I mean, over 50% of people under the age of 25 in 2012 who graduated are either unemployed or underemployed. Mm -hmm. So it's a crisis. Mm -hmm. How much does... U.S. News and World Report rankings play in all this? It plays a huge role. The Princeton Review rankings, the uh, I believe Forbes has rankings as well. Um, it's, it's a race for prestige which influences um, schools to build research laboratories um, to get higher rankings, mm -hmm. um, you know, ever more luxurious dormitories, mm -hmm. um, stadiums. Um, I mean many of these things in, in their 
in their conception are, are good. I mean, of course we want more research laboratories, we want more mm-hmm. um, research going on, but then there's a, a problem also with professors who are concentrating on research rather than mm-hmm. actually teaching students in a culture, a dynamic in the classroom where people are um, uh, sort of rewarding professors who create an easy class. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we look at this concept of academically adrift students um, who are, according to this study, um, uh, basically 36% of them at large mid-tier universities uh, not having any appreciable uh, gain in, in learning skills, mm-hmm. um, doing less than 10 um, hours of work a week. Mm-hmm. Um, statistics that are really sort of shocking. And the money isn't going to professors, right? It does go to facilities. It go, It's not like they're luring professors, and more and more professors are adjuncts. As well. That's right. The adjunct crisis is. This was actually in the New York Times just this weekend. Mm. Is a really important factor as well. Um, yeah, but the, even more sort of disturbing, I think, is that administration since 1978 have ballooned by about 230 mm-hmm. percent, and faculties have only gone up by 51 percent. Mm-hmm. So you see that the, a lot of the money is not going to teaching the students per se, mm-hmm. but in building these massive campuses and then in managing them. Because of course, when you quadruple or you know multiply by 10 your your infrastructure you need people to manage that complex array of mm-hmm. of facilities and programs it really takes I mean I think you have to look at an education as a consumer I think people do more research when they go to buy a car a computer uh, you know an mp3 player than they do when they go look at campuses they feel like they're doing research but to look at the numbers the employment numbers for graduates afterwards they don't a lot of people just think you get a stamp you're now a college graduate and you, you you know, go go make money. I mean, I agree with you. And, and, and then in a certain way, I, I think that there's a little bit of a problem with that consumer mentality. Mm-hmm. So you're absolutely right that, you know, parents and students need to sit down at the dinner table and have a really frank conversation about what they can afford and whether it's right for a specific student, a uh, young person to go to school. Is that the way they learn or not? Mm-hmm. On the other hand, you know, when you charge people so much money, for school, they develop this consumerist mentality about their education, mm. and they want things to be easy. They want them to be the yoga centers. They want the <laughs> yoga centers exactly. They want a party. They want to have the college that the Animal House experience, <laughs> and that is not good because it's creating this culture where rigorous learning is not being emphasized, but rather um, a sort of four-year you know pit stop on the rest of your life where mm-hmm. you can party and hang out mm-hmm. uh, is taking place. And, and of course, it's not that we necessarily want as a society everybody going to school and you know, being a robot and only um, learning skills to get a job, but I think that as a society we hope that the sort of um, the lost years that college can represent are mm-hmm. more about like self-discovery mm-hmm. and, and character formation instead of just getting drunk or, you Which, know, uh, for four years. Right, and that's, I mean, that's clearly a student mentality. Mm-hmm. That's not... You know, I, you, but I guess the, the, the argument that we see in the film mm-hmm. is that when you charge so much and you base prestige on the building of, of the buildings and stuff, you're creating a culture where the student as consumer mm-hmm. um, demands more and more of these um, products mm-hmm. that are sort of necessarily separate from academic rigor and from self-discovery. Sure. But if you were just to play, I mean, it, you know... If you're a student, you can go to Club Med, and you know if you actually care about your education, you're going to invest in it and you're going to put in the work. There is, I think, we are graduating people from high school who are not prepared. Who are, Absolutely. You know, it's it's not. I think beginning this is a huge problem, but I don't think it's beginning at the college level. It's a massive problem, and in fact, we uh, went to San Jose State University, where uh, a majority of the students are coming in without knowledge of of algebra and other sort of. Uh, remedial um, skills and so in that case um, massive open online courses the MOOCs Mm -hmm. were employed to um, teach students statistics and algebra and these basic skills but unfortunately because these classes were provided exclusively online Mm -hmm. um, and there was no sort of in-person instruction Mm -hmm. the pass rates were terrible Mm -hmm. Um, and so what we found is that hybrid um, experiences where students take a lot of their classes online Mm -hmm. um, can be cheaper like at uh, Bunker Hill Community College Mm -hmm. but still successful when they have somebody in the class who's supporting them um, and and guiding the experience 
Well, it's really interesting, and it's a great examination of it. I appreciate it. Andrew Rossi, thank, thank you for so coming. Much. Good luck at Sundance this week. Thanks. Thanks, thanks.